yeah it's pretty much how it goes around here barking trains roads it's what's happening boo junkies mike delgadio here back with another video on home studio setup for voiceover sort of home studio setup for voiceover this is sort of microphone choice for streamers is sort of the choice we have why am I not in the booth? Well, it's all because of this microphone right here. And it was sent to me by the nice folks at Blue. Blue, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much for sending me this microphone. It's actually a really nice microphone. Which microphone is it, Mike? It is the <laughs> Blue Ember. Why aren't I in the booth, you might ask? And it's because what it says, what it says, what what it says right here on the box, it says. Studio condenser mic for recording and streaming. So they're saying that this mic is especially good for streaming. So let's talk about that and use it in the context of this room. So I want to interrupt for just a second. I feel like it should be fair to the microphone to actually let you hear it in a studio sort of setting. So I brought it down into my booth. So we're out of the live streaming mode or we're in a live streaming studio that's actually well acoustically treated. So now we're down in my vocal booth and now you get a chance to really hear how this microphone sounds. The first thing for a $99 microphone is that this microphone is really, really quiet. Let's just take a listen. I mean, there's nothing, right? There's, there's, there's nothing there. It's very, very quiet. So that's handy. So when you're hearing it up in the room upstairs, what you're actually hearing is the ambient noise of not being in a studio. Down here in my studio where it's really quiet, you don't hear that noise. That noise, that underlying hiss, isn't actually in the microphone. It's in the room. It's hearing the room. That's important. The other thing as I was listening back, and I didn't mention it, and I, you won't hear it for the rest of the, the, the video, is this has a uh, does not come with a pop filter. You definitely need to have a pop filter. They show it without one, and, and the basket actually seems to be loaded with foam. Uh, but you did hear it along the way up there. The, this one will, is susceptible to plosives, so you definitely need a windscreen in front of it. Even though it looks like it's protected with foam inside, you can't see the capsule. I was still hearing a lot of plosives when I was editing. So there you have it. Sounds really good in the studio though, doesn't it? 99 bucks? Yeah, this is, it sounds pretty good. So this room is my, <laughs> my streaming setup. I, I don't really do any live streaming, but this is this is what I see quite frequently as the kind of setup that people who are doing live streaming might do. They might have a keyboard in front of them. Their computer might be right here. But very frequently, they're not in a voice booth. They're in a bedroom, a room dedicated to their computer. And more often than not, it is untreated or treated poorly. It might have some of this stuff on the wall, this egg crate stuff. This does nothing. This does nothing. It reduces ever so slightly the high, very high frequency reverberation. But generally speaking, this stuff, junk. Don't bother with it. Get real acoustic foam, the, the thick stuff. If you're going to make panels for the wall, make this stuff that's got to be heavier than that. That doesn't work. Let it be known. Anyway, I'm way off track. Rant over. The Blue Ember is a $99 condenser microphone and it says it's appropriate for streaming so $99 that price point tells me it's your entry-level microphone right it's not a $600 Neumann it's not a $300 Rode it's a $99 microphone now it's definitely a step up from something like a Yeti which is like a hundred and some odd but that's a USB mic this is an XLR mic so this microphone also requires a second piece of hardware an interface. Let's see if I can do this without making it go haywire. So here I have a Focusrite two, uh, Scarlett 2i2. And that is, you know, a very common entry level consumer grade preamplifier. Works great, but you know, it's consumer grade. And 
it's very typical in a streaming setup that you would have an entry level mic, a consumer grade preamp going into your computer. And that's definitely a step up from a USB. The combination of these two together, call it 200 to 25, something like that. I have it as a point of comparison to compare to another $99 mic, and this is a dynamic mic. This is the Shure SM58, just to give you a sense of the back and forth. Now, let's just talk about the differences between these microphones real quick, and, and hopefully that will give us some of the context of why I'm in this room. Okay, so as I said, they're both $99. This one's a condenser. This one is a dynamic. The condenser requires 48 volts of phantom power. On your preamplifier or mixer, there's a little button that'll probably say phantom power, or it might say plus 48, or it'll say 48V or something like that. You turn that on and you have to power this microphone from that. Now, if you've never purchased a microphone before, you may, be, you may go looking for one that's got an XLR and one end, and like a headphone jack on the other, like a three eighths or whatever it is, three and a half millimeter, the, you know, the little thing like your headphone jack for your, what used to be on your phone, that it, it, that's not going to work. You can't use that kind of cable for this microphone. This one has to go to a, an interface that supplies phantom power and it will say 48 volts. At most, the uh, your laptop might provide something called plug-in power, which is like, it's not nearly the same. It doesn't have enough gusto. Won't work. You need an interface or something that provides phantom power. Uh, number one, the uh, dynamic microphone, on the other hand, does not require phantom power, but also your computer's not, but probably not gonna have the gusto if you have an XLR on one and the three and a half on the other. It's gonna be so quiet that you can't hear anything and you will say, I can't make it loud enough. You need an interface. When you have these XLR mics, for all intents and purposes, you need an interface. Okay, enough said. The, the, uh, these are both in the cardioid pattern, which means they are somewhat insensitive from certain directions. So if you've never purchased a microphone before, you should know that the pattern is described in what they call a cardioid pattern. There's a super cardioid and just a cardioid cardioid, and there's other pattern names, but the most common are cardioid. And that means that they are very sensitive from one side and on the other side, the back of the capsule, they're not sensitive. They're very insensitive. They won't hear as well from the opposite side of the capsule. Now, that leads us to the... Or, so, there's a sensitive side and an insensitive side. And it's roughly in a heart shape. That cardio, cardioid pattern. It's roughly off about 90 degrees. And everything behind you, it's going to hear everything that's over here. And less what's over here. Less, not nothing, less. And anything, if I snap my fingers on this side, see, you can still hear it because it's bouncing, that echo, it's echoing off that wall into here. So you, the sound bounces and it's always going to end up. Now, they're both cardioid patterns, but you notice that they're oriented in different directions. Even though they look very similar, they're long and they've got a basket on the end that's sort of got this wire mesh. They are, they are different address style. So this is an end address microphone. You talk into the end of it. And this is a side address microphone. Even though Blue went and made it look like it's a side address, it, I mean, an, an end address, it looks like you should be talking into it this way because it looks like the same sort of form factor as that one. It's not. It's a side address. Now, if you've seen uh, enough videos of people talking into the end of like a Blue Yeti, you'll see that it, does, it just doesn't work as well. And in fact, Blue sort of acknowledges this because right on the box, the first thing you see before you see the microphone is a diagram <laughs> that says, talk into this end, not this end, this end. This is a side address microphone. You talk into the side of it. That's a big, that's going to be a big thing. So if you select a, this microphone, know that you talk into the side, not the end. If you talk into the end of it, you will be disappointed. It will sound muffled. It'll sound echoey. It'll sound like not so hot because you're probably talking into a much less sensitive side of it. Okay, so they're both $99. They're both cardioid patterns. This one requires that phantom power. This one does not. Now, sometimes what that will mean is the dynamic microphones tend to be less sensitive 
as you move away from the microphone. So if there's sound, if there's noise in the ambient air around you, could be traffic going by, could be the air conditioner that's right over there, could be the fans from your computer. Those, uh, the dynamics tend to be somewhat less sensitive as you get farther and farther away from the microphone. The condensers, on the other hand, they tend to be pretty sensitive. They, the, the classic sentence is, you can hear a mouse fart three doors over. It, these are very sensitive microphones, and it's just by their nature. The trade-off for that is the... Uh, almost always the condenser mics can hear more of the frequency range than the dynamic uh, microphones. So what that means is this will hear lower bass and higher treble than this one. This is good down to like 38 hertz. This is good to like 50 hertz, less bass. So if you're trying to get that bass in your voice, this is going to have less of it. This one also goes higher. This goes to like 20,000 hertz. This goes all the way up to the to the edge of human hearing-ish. This one, the Shure, the SM58, the dynamic microphone, only goes to about 15,000 hertz. Now, most of your voice information is not above 15,000 hertz. However, it does because there's, uh, there's harmonics and things up there. The condenser mics tend to sound a little airier a little clearer, a little crisper than the, than the dynamics. To exaggerate it, the dynamic range, or the dynamic mic will sound a little bit muffled by comparison, but it's slight. I don't want to talk poorly about the SM58. You can hear it. It's a crisp, clear microphone. It's no joke. This is a pro grade. You've This microphone, not this exact one, but this style of microphone has given concerts in front of 80,000 people with some of the biggest names in the book. This has been used in studios around the world. Every studio in the world has SM58s. They're good. They're good microphones. It's just that they're the way they work, it's a little bit different. So you can make a choice between the two. You might like the form factor of the side address. You might like the form factor of the end address. It's really going to come down to personal preference. Otherwise, the sound is pretty close to each other. Now, that brings us to a second point about the condenser mic and the ember. Now, I'm going to try and manipulate these mics. Sorry, it's, you're going to hear a little bit of a, some, some noise handling. What I see a lot of times on for streamers, what they do is they'll put they'll do this. They'll put the microphone way off. They'll put the microphone way off to the side, right? Because they don't want it to get in their way. They want to be able to see. Uh, they want to be. They want to have their face in front of the in front of their computer, and they want to have the mic off, and it's so it's not in their face. But look what happens as I move back from the mic. And this doesn't matter if it's a condenser mic or if it's a dynamic mic. The farther you get away from that mic, do you hear how echoey it got? You hear all of the room around me. And that's going to be whether it's, it's going to be worse, probably more prevalent in the condenser mic than in the dy dynamic mic. Because the dynamic mic doesn't hear that wall quite as well as this one. This one's more sensitive. But as I move away from it, it gets louder and echoier. You can hear more of the room, even though I'm talking the same and I'm only, I don't know, I'm like that far away from the microphone. It's a fact of life that you need to be close to the microphone. It's called, um, I'd call it the signal to noise ratio. I didn't invent that term. I think that's what uh, other people would, would call it. And that is the difference between the signal, your voice, what you want to get into the mic, and the noise, all the stuff that's around the mic that you don't want to get in there. That noise, the echo, the air conditioner, the traffic, the trains going by, all that stuff is reasonably quiet compared to your voice when it's really up on that mic. So you notice as I get nice and close to the mic, you don't hear that echo. You don't hear it very much. But as I move away from the microphone, you hear that echo. Even though I'm even talking louder, you hear all that echo the condenser mic will probably make that worse. So it's as much the microphone technique as it is the microphone itself. So the Blue Ember says it's for streaming. And I think that's a bit of marketing. All due respect to Blue. They gave me the mic, and so I'm giving my honest opinion of it. I think that using it as for streaming, they're telling you that, yeah, you can use it for streaming, but really... You can use, it's just an XLR microphone. You can use any microphone for streaming. This one just happens to probably sound good 
and fit into the budget of people who are streaming. So if this isn't like your main gig, you just want to stream on Twitch a little bit, you want to make some videos on YouTube, this is a great mic. These are both great mics, These are, but it's a great mic and it is will give you a nice, clean, clear signal for streaming so long as you are close to the mic. If you're far away from the mic, it's still going to sound echoey just like every other microphone. You got to get close to it. So could you use it for streaming? Yeah, absolutely. Is it the only mic for streaming? No, it's really not. Sorry, Blue. That is just the fact. Now, what do you get in the box with the Blue, uh, with the Ember? You sort of get the same thing for both. You get a microphone and you get a rigid clip. Can I do this without breaking things? So on the bottom, can you see this down here? This is what I'm looking at right here. It comes with a clip that allows you to attach it, to, allows you to attach the microphone to a microphone stand. But if I have one complaint about this microphone, aside from the use of marketing thing for streaming, if I have one complaint about this microphone, I really wanted this microphone to come with a shock mount. Condenser microphones, by their very nature, by their design, are not meant to be really to be handheld. Not this form factor. You're not supposed to hold this in your hand. And so it is very sensitive to, if you're, if you're pounding on your desk, you're typing on your keyboard, a lot of that rumble ends up in the microphone. If you hear people, if you hear people like with a blue Yeti that's got a rigid stand that's coupled to the desk, you're essentially, you're acoustically coupling the microphone to the desk if it's on a stand that is on your desk. So thumps as you type into your, on your keyboard, those thumps go through the microphone stand and up into the microphone. And the way you can isolate and remove some of that thumping is with a shock mount. And the this Ember does not come with one in the box. It comes with this crazy not crazy, Just it just comes with this rigid mount. There's no shock absorbency in it. The SM58, they say, it's all inside. Uh, the shock absorber is, is all inside because this is, microphone's meant to be held in your hand. So it's fortified. It's a very rigid microphone and it's got some internal dampening for it. But as far as I know, the Ember doesn't or, you know, you, as you handle that mic, you can hear that, that it, it transmits itself into the microphone itself and you can hear it. So you really need a shock mount. You don't touch these microphones when they're in use and you want to isolate them from the floor. Well, okay, fine, Mike. I'll just pop on Amazon and I'll grab one of those cheapies from Niwa or whoever. Well, the Ember is a very narrow microphone. It's only like an inch and a half across. So I happen to have one of those El Cheapo Niwa clampy shock mounts that you might go and buy for like 12 or 13 bucks. And you just, you, you squeeze the clamp and it opens up and it squeezes the microphone. But watch. This is the microphone so narrow, it doesn't clamp. <laughs> so you might say, well, I'll find one with the same thread. So I have one of those with the same thread. And this was like a $25 one that I got, I don't know, like on Banggood or something like that. I think they could ship this from China. It's rigid, but and it's got the same thread, but the microphone threads on this are not long enough, so it, it just sort of flops around in here. I don't get a good isolation. The microphone still flops around. So now I've purchased two shock mounts, and neither of them fit. So it makes me say, hmm, maybe I should go to Blue to get their microphone shock mount. And... The shock mount, SM3, I think is what it's called, uh, costs 99 bucks. It costs the same as the mic. What is this, like an Apple monitor or something like that? Stand, $9.99. $99 for a shock mount. Now, that's a reasonable price for a shock mount, but when you're paying $99 for the microphone to then double the cost to get the shock absorbency, mm, that's, uh, that is a, that's tough. I really wish Blue would have just said, we'll give you a... Uh, a, a clampy style one, but one that, you know, is only 12 or $13 um, rather than 99. Would it, would the, would the microphone benefit from a, a $99 shock mount? Yeah, it sure would. But if you're spending 99 bucks on a microphone, that means your budget is fairly limited and $99 for a shock mount that, that hurts. 
that's a tough one. That's a tough one for me. So I really wish they would have included one in a budget because now all of a sudden, if it's a $200 mic, the world of the competition gets a whole lot stiffer in the $200 mic range. And money that many of those come with shock mounts. You can look at, you know, the, uh, I don't know, audio technicas and stuff like that. You, their competition is, is stiffer. Hmm. So there's a, there's, there's that to consider that I wish this had a shock mount. As you can see, as long as I don't touch the desk, it doesn't thump, but really this stand should be on the floor and not on my desk or on some kind of other, you know, decoupled from my desk. So as I, as I tap away on my keyboard, it doesn't transmit into the microphone anyway. So that's, that's the thing. That's, that's a shock mount. What else is there to say about the microphone? Sounds great. As long as you get nice and close to it, it's got really great response. You can compare it to another $99 studio grade microphone, $99, different style, and you can see which one is the one for you. Uh, uh, otherwise, the Blue Ember. You tell me. Tell me, do you think that this is a, a good sounding mic? I, I'm impressed with its clarity. I'm impressed with how quiet it is. Um, a gain comparison, looking at the knobs on here, this microphone, the gain is turned practically all the way up. It's a classic thing about dynamics is you have to turn your preamp all the way up. Whereas the, um, the gain is only set to about 65% of the way up, which is pretty typical for a condenser microphone. So this one, you can keep your preamps lower, which means on something like a prosumer uh, or a, a consumer grade preamplifier like this, it means your preamplifiers are going to be quieter because there's an underlying hiss under here. But you can hear it. They both pick up the ambient noise. This is very typical bedroom bedroom uh, live streaming studio. This is what you can expect a Blue Ember to sound like. And by comparison, just so you can compare it to something else, the Shure SM58 Studio Dynamic Microphone. That's all I have for you today. I hope that helps. So if you are looking, uh, if you're a streamer looking for a streaming microphone that would work in your bedroom, the Blue Ember is definitely an option that's out there, as are uh, several other microphones in its price point. But I think the Ember definitely makes a uh, definitely makes a fine showing. Definitely makes a fine showing, and it's definitely worth consideration, especially if you can find a shock mount for it. If anybody knows of a shock mount for this thing uh, that would that's uh, more economical than $99, let me know in the comments and I'll try and remember to pin it up there or something for everybody. But yeah, definitely leave a leave a note in the comments uh, if you can find one for this. I haven't I haven't found one, but I haven't done a, a deep dive to look. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. I hope that helps. I hope that uh, that that demonstration of the echo uh, in the room. I hope that helps. That really speaks to the need for acoustic treatment, no matter what microphone, and it really speaks to the need to get up close to those microphones so that you do remove that echo just by making your voice nice and loud and powerful in the microphone. Yeah, is that good? All right, I hope that helps. That's all I have for you today. Now, go get yourself a microphone. Maybe it's a dynamic, maybe it's a condenser, and maybe it's the Blue Ember. Who knows? But get yourself a microphone, get yourself an interface, and get in your room. Get in your room, get up close to that mic and record something amazing. Thanks. We'll talk to you next time.